Hey all, so this is the fifth war of the season against SAS, and the funny thing is that despite me having several friends in SAS, uh, Dreamin is actually one of the people that I've known the longest in playing this game, and uh, Janik, who was recently announced as one of the Kabam uh, balance team members, are both there, but we have not played them I don't know when the last time was, but it was before I started uploading war videos. So that's at least back through season 25. So it's been a long time, and it's nice to face off against them again. They're a very good alliance. So this one is going to be tough. So this first fight I have is Magneto House of X on Prowess Puncture. This is a really solid placement for him, because there's basically no way that he's not going to gain some prowess, which means he is going to pick up his block penetration. And that is why I threw on the invulnerability boost, because I intend to try and dodge every single special one, and I'm pretty good at that evade, but I don't consider myself 100% on it, and so I would rather just try to dodge it and fail and eat an invulnerability boost than have it hit into my block at full strength and do both high ground and block damage. Which, as you can see, happened there once anyway, despite me trying to go for the decks. I guess I was a bit slow. Inputs are what they are. It's whatever. That's why we boost for these things, and every time I have blocked a hit, I have been extremely grateful for Reed's energy resistance because it is helping me blunt high ground significantly, but that shock is also accelerating it, so we're taking more than maybe we could have. Still, stacking all those suppressions means fewer specials in the first place to have to deal with, and all those petrifies we were reversing willpower, doing extra damage that way. Reed hits pretty hard as he gets going. I consider that an unqualified success. So heal up, not a big issue. I take this Tigra. Now, because she has power focus too, the suppression won't be helping us that much. When we get all the, petri uh, all the petrifies up, we will be able to reduce and even reverse the power gain from Mystic Dispersion. But we are not going to be able to blunt the combat power rate all that much. Because of that, I'm going to try and bait her special ones I would love to get the passive up here, but if I feel that I have to push her to the special two to keep my debuffs active, I will and I will not be sad about it. I am pretty darn good at that evade, in part because I play Tiger myself so much, and as long as I make sure to hit her block, otherwise keep her backed up so that I have room to do that evade, I'm not worried. Also, we took Tigra last war, on a mini boss node where she had significantly more health and I was shocked at how quick the fight was so once we get rolling I'm not really worried about taking her out. So she throws the one special one there. Doesn't seem to want to throw it here because she threw that heavy. I hit in. Uh, TOSV here is running a significant amount of Mystic Dispersion so I decided to just go ahead and push she was probably going to get to the special two anyway, and once she's at the special two, because it's power focus, I can pretty much go ham and not worry about sending her any further. I also knew that after two read fights in a row, I was likely going to have as many pre-fights as I needed. I didn't need to do something stupid and prolong the fight artificially just to get one more. And I actually did come out of there with eight, so that was definitely the right call. Just nuke her down as quickly as possible. So then going into the second half of the map here, I have three kingpin fights, which are fairly standard, but the first one is Magneto. So I'm taking both Magnetos this war. Lots of high ground. Love that. Not going to miss it. So I'm throwing on these special skill boosts. I know they don't work against Magneto, but I'm turning them on now so I don't forget in between fights. I am putting on an invulnerability because for both Magneto and Korg, there is a small chance of getting hit. But my basic plan of attack with both of these is to do some intercepts, and especially light intercepts and backdrafts, and to generally just trust how tanky Kingpin is, trust my invulnerability boosts to save me if I need them to, and stay aggressive, especially on this first one, 
because high ground is just going to get worse and worse. We can try and throw the special two because it will give us more openings. We can use the special one because it will give us a weakness and reduce how much damage he does to us. But the special one is a degen and accelerates high ground. So there are some trade-offs here. As you can see, we're staying on top of him pretty well. I'm also doing my best to try and bait him out into that short range special one. Didn't feel great about that second one, so I did a full evade and then went for an intercept. But if he throws it more up close, then I'm comfortable actually punishing it, and that's a free window. That matters a lot. So right there, I thought I had just blocked, and he had hit into me, and I was going to basically use the unstoppable as a counterpunch, like I do with Killmonger. But unfortunately, I was slightly later than I thought, accidentally parried him, hit into him twice with one eye open, and did more damage to myself than he has done to me in the entire rest of this fight. So kind of unfortunate, but also good that I haven't taken more damage from other sources, because I'll just be able to heal up after this one, the degen finishes him off, and we're good to go. So don't love the class disadvantage there, but there's nothing stopping Kingpin from shrugging, and most of the other options for this lane are metal, which is definitely why Magneto is here. I mean, your best other option that isn't metal would probably be, off the top of my head, um, Thing, and he's definitely going to be slower, and he usually likes to play with parries, so Kingpin is absolutely the guy to go to for this fight, or for this path in general. For Korg, I'm assuming that I am going to eat some Thorns damage, but I'm also trying to not eat too much. Um, and that's why you saw me go for that backdraft. He didn't take the bait, but that's okay. We took two instances of thorns in that cycle of the rock shield. Now we're going to go ahead and throw this on to reduce the block damage we're taking from him. We can parry freely um, as long as he doesn't have the shield up. I was hoping to land that medium punish before the shield came back. It's okay. One count of thorns. This time he went for the backdraft. And yeah, we're just off to the races here doing plenty of damage. That armor is starting to add up. We don't really have a way to deal with it, and Kingpin's crit rate is not awesome. Um, so I am going to try and use... Or no, I don't use the special one, because the damage over time would have been nice. I'm basically just betting that this double overpower is going to help me do a ton of damage, but then he decides to turtle up, and I lose one of them and most of the other, baiting out that special too. Gotta love how the AI interacts with, oh, you have a beneficial effect on you that's going to expire. Be a real shame if I did absolutely nothing. Anyway, not a big problem for Kingpin. We're still over 80%. Easy money. So going into this next one, I was testing something that I maybe should have tested in a quest before this. But I use more pre-fights than I should on this next one. Um, because I-Bomb takes less damage from Poison, and so I was throwing on Debuff Siphoner because, oh, it'll work like Enhanced Poison. And it would if there were any duration in I-Bomb's self-applied poisons. <laughs> or sorry, if there were any potency to them at all. But they deal zero poison damage. And so Debuff Siphoner takes his 100% resistance and basically turns it down to 75, and he takes 75% of zero poison damage. <laughs> so if I were using somebody else in this fight who did poison damage, like maybe OG uh, Abomination, then that would have felt like a very big brain move, I'm pretty sure, but instead it was just a wasted pre-fight. Whatever, now I know I won't make that mistake again. The Suppression and Petrify, though, I am happy to have here, because Petrify is going to blunt Kinetic Transference whenever we have to block a hit, and Suppression is going to mean that we just have to worry about fewer of his specials. And I very much like that, because I do not want to get backed up by his special one and end up blocking the whole thing. It's a fair number of hits, and he could easily gain a lot of power that way. I think I stick exclusively to the special one throughout this fight because it's going to mean that he doesn't hit as hard 
and it's also going to mean damage over time. It's another debuff, so we're just, you know, basically just reversing willpower slightly more here, it looks like. Um, heavy counter that to refresh the debuffs. It's a pretty easy opening. But yeah, I'm also sticking to the special one because the special two would trigger that brief indestructible he has from the feat of indestructible. And so we're just completely avoiding that by spamming the special one. Doing plenty of damage over time to him, hitting extremely hard just in general. Yet this is a really easy fight. I think I end up finishing with a full yellow bar. Yeah, there we go. And so that's the end of my war. I'm going to be applying uh, some read pre-fights later on, but that's pretty much all there is to this. As of recording this, we are almost tied. I think we just lost the tie because we had a disconnect. A fight failed to load, and so we had to reload it, and that's going to count against us. Always frustrating when that happens. Hopefully we can hold strong and pull ahead, but I am going to go ahead and upload this and work on other videos later on. Um, when this war is decided, I'll pin a comment with the outcome, but in the meantime, good luck to anyone in SSX who still needs to fight. Good luck to SAS, because it's always good facing you guys. Got a lot of friends over there, and we'll see how this one goes. Until next time, thanks for watching. Take care.